welcome on behalf of our co-authors. Um, just a little bit of background. I started out actually as a software engineer working on projects ranging from video game development to real-time software for video editing and special effects, currency forecasting systems, applied NLP for semantic search, museum collection support, and eventually digital humanities research. I ended up shifting to team leadership over, over time and now do strategic planning and professional development for, our, for the RCT community. Um, so I feel a lot of connection to the RSC folks. And Shafak, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, so hi, everyone. Uh, I also started uh, as a software engineer working for uh, a couple of multinational firms. I still remember one of my uh, jobs, that company, they had never ever hired a female software engineer before. So that was quite an experience there. Um, and uh, in the US, while pursuing higher education, I continued uh, working part time as a programmer. And then later on, I uh, became the manager for the programmers team. And uh, now I serve as a director for research technology uh, at the University of Central Florida. So it's a uh, strategy and policy facing role. So for those of you who don't know about CARC, which is the organization within which we're doing some of the work that we're presenting, it's an organization that advances the frontiers of research by improving the effectiveness of RCD professionals, including their career development and visibility, and their ability to deliver services and resources for researchers. So it's much like RSC for the broader set of RCD professionals. And when we say RCD, we use that as a really broad rubric, and it includes um, a whole range of different things, including the different tracks you see there that are the People Network, which is a discussion forum, sort of a, a year round conference. And you'll note in particular that um, for the software related issues, we do point people at RSE because of all the great stuff that you guys are doing. There are a number of working groups at CARC, including the professionalization and career arcs groups that are doing a lot of work around exploring the demographics and understanding decisions. Um, that impact people's careers. But there's also other groups doing the capabilities model, which is just an assessment tool for programs and a couple of interest groups working on things like staff and student training programs. So the, the larger context of the work that we're talking about today started about six years ago, actually, with a series of meetings and workshops that recognized the need to support folks doing the kind of work that we all do we ended up coining this facings term to describe the different roles involved. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. A series of workshops then led to the development of things like an HR job family matrix that's used by more and more universities. And more recently, several surveys to understand the demographics of our communities, um, you know, getting to that counting that Damien was pointing out is so essential. And then we also were looking at factors that influence career path decisions. So, um, we really encourage you, um, if you're interested more in some of the things that Damien was talking about, to look at the PERC 22 paper that was related that's on a census of the RCD workforce. So I mentioned this facings, and, and before we dive into our results, I want to describe what we mean by this. It's a concept um, that's broadly used within CARC at this point, and it's really just describing people and roles, not individuals, but roles more because many of us wear several hats in terms of the kinds of things you focus on. So we, we talk about researcher facing for folks that are doing direct research engagement, um, data facing for things like RDM specialists, data librarians and scientists. Um, the software facing is primarily research software engineers, but also includes some folks that are doing other kinds of software work, for example, in HPC environments. The systems facing is probably the best understood, you know, systems engineers, storage, network engineers, folks like that. And then the strategy and policy facing, which is really around leadership and management. So that's just how we, we, we describe the roles, but we recognize few people wear a single hat. Um, and depending on the size of the organization, you may have people that specialize in one or that have to cover everything. So the motivation for pursuing this um, really recognizes that, that our profession has several challenges. Um, and while we mention this in the context of RCD roles broadly, the same things applies in the RC, RSE world, we know. There's a critical shortage of, of our workforce and people in, capable of doing this. There's just not enough people to fill the needs of the research computing and data profession to support the advanced research that depends on this workforce. Recruitment challenges are a big issue. We don't know where to find some of the people that we could recruit into this. Um, recruiters don't always know how to market or where to market these things. 
um, and how to really make it sound compelling in many cases. And then we have retention challenges that include the lack of well-defined career paths for people. So when we pursued this, we had one of our partners, Kurt Key, is a, a professor who really looks at organizational studies. And um, we were thinking about this idea of organizational socialization, which is defined as a learning and adjustment process that enables an individual to assume an organizational role that fits both organizational and individual needs. So it includes a series of steps ranging from pre-entry where you want to understand what attracts talent to the field so that you can better market to them, the entry phase where you're, you really want research-based information on talent pools for hiring managers um, to really effectively recruit the, these folks, a metamorphosis stage which ranges from onboarding new folks to motivating them to stay and grow, which is really that retention uh, point, and then um, looking at exit, you know, what is it um, that drives people out of the field? And so the aims here are to help recruiters market these positions, help hiring managers recruit and retain, highlight the possibilities for future workforce and, and really the, the paths available to the existing workforce. So um, we, we had a standard um, IRB approved research model for this. Um, and you can read more about this in the paper. We devised a survey of about 31 questions. It was distributed um, to a range of different folks. It ran from November 21 through January. Um, and then we did our analysis and submitted our initial findings to PERC 22. So when we were looking at the data, um, and you can read more of the details about this in the paper, but we really were interested in, in a couple of key areas. You know, how well did people understand this field and what relevance ex experience they thought applied to it? Um, what were the things that they thought were important about getting access and getting into roles in RCD? And then what were the things that motivated them to change jobs within RCD or to leave um, this world altogether? And in, in looking at that analysis, we considered three lenses, um, where they were in their career, early, middle, or late, um, the gender and how that impacted, and then roles. And um, we don't have time for everything today, but we do want to look at the, the roles in particular, focusing on software facing and what was distinctive about them for, for this community and gender as well. So, um, this is a, a graph that just shows the distribution for those who reported that they have a software facing role. So that's most germane for, for the community. It's, it's here at the workshop today. And as you can see, the software facing respondents skewed heavily to those with less than 10 years of experience, um, but it does include um, a fairly broad range altogether. The curve for the, the total set of respondents is pretty similar. It was just spread out a little bit more. So we asked how important were the following factors in your successfully pursuing research and computing RCD opportunities. So we let them rank 17 factors that ranged from demographics to skills and capabilities. And so here we see the top three, and it's not surprising that the top two are technical skills and experience in academic research, although we did think it was interesting that interpersonal communication um, was ranked number three. There was a whole middle set that ranged from training and experience to referrals and things like that. And at the bottom of that set is leadership skills, which I wanna come back to in a minute. Um, and then we'll note that for software facing folks, uh, certifications um, were not highly valued and folks didn't believe that age, gender or racial identity were major factors in getting jobs. And, and I will say that this, the, la the ranking of that latter thing may well be a function of a largely white male population that responded to the survey. I think people um, don't acknowledge what impact that has on getting jobs. So when we, we then asked, what does advancement in your current RCD role mean to you? And this is um, how factors were ranked by folks who identified as software facing. Um, and I would note that factors related to leadership, like having influence and making an impact are rated quite high, although people didn't consider them that important in getting a job. So um, there's an interesting contrast as well between factors that are related to leadership, which is, as we say, are rated quite high, and factors that are more in the domain of management and which are actually related, rated quite low. 
and I think this may partly reflect a distinction between research related roles, um, like research software engineers versus traditional IT roles, given that the culture of research organizations tends to be less structured and hierarchical than enterprise IT roles. When we look at that same question for all facings, and here each of those colors represents uh, one of the different facings, and, and this graph just shows the top and bottom um, factors, the most highly and lowest rated factors. Um, we'll see that the, in general, the software facing is pretty consistent with what the broader range of folks had to say. Um, all folks in research computing and data roles care most about recognition and impact. Although salary is clearly important, um, and they generally care a lot less about factors that are valued in more traditional or enterprise IT roles. Let me just think that's interesting. We also asked how important were a set of factors in motivating you to make a previous job transition or that would motivate you to consider a future job transition or within the RCD field. Um, and for all RCD roles taken together, there's an interesting contrast between seeing higher salary is one of the highest signs of advancement and a relatively lower ranking of salary when shifting from one RCD job to another. And while this is um, somewhat less pronounced within software facing roles than, than overall that same pattern uh, holds. We also, we then asked how important were each of these factors in motivating you to leave an RCD role for something in a domain outside of RCD that is um, you know, leaving RCD or that might motivate you to. And the top two um, were about salary and stability of funding. And it's interesting that the number two factor was a loss of funding because in the previous question on moving to another RCD job, this same factor had a very low ranking. So the loss of funding isn't a factor for moving from one RCD job to another, but it's a major factor for leaving RCD altogether, for example, moving to industry. Uh, the next set are mostly about organizational and job satisfaction issues of note. People are not leaving RCD roles because they're excited about moving into industry. Um, and again, this, the ranking of the software facing folks is largely consistent with what we saw in other areas. Um, some things that we noted that are kind of interesting for folks that are interested in moving up um, into leadership roles is that progressing up a series of titles as much, it was more important to folks in software facing roles than we did see for folks in data facing and system facing roles. So that's kind of interesting. And then the distinction between strategy and policy facing roles show that um, there folks in those roles are less interested in developing deep domain knowledge, acquiring new skills and becoming a senior contributor, but they're more interested in things like organizational influence, funding, growing a bigger team. Interestingly, community engagement was high for them and opportunities for advancement and culture of innovation. Okay, so I'm ripping through a lot of this stuff. There's more detail in the paper. And now I want to transition and let Shafak talk a little bit about what we saw with gender in this data. Thanks, Patrick. Uh, so for uh, the gender lens, we wanted to see if, you know, whether gender does play any role whatsoever in these factors that we analyzed in our study. Um, so as far as demographics were concerned, we had 225 respondents of those 58.5% were men and 34.6% uh, that identified as women, 3.8% non-binary or other genders, and 3.1% chose not to disclose the gender. And uh, uh, you know, as per some other studies as well, we notice here that although we have representation of the genders in all the different facings, but for the uh, system and software facing, we see there are more men uh, than women uh, who chose this facing. And in fact, if we were to zoom in on the software facing, we can see that of the respondents that did select this, uh, there were 26% women, uh, almost 70% men, 2.2% non-binary or other genders, and the rest were 2.2%. So uh, coming back to those research questions that we asked. Uh, so the question was, what does career advancement uh, mean uh, for the different genders? Do they give importance to different factors when talking about advancement? And what we saw is that women, they consider a recognition and impact to be far more important than compensation. Whereas men, they rate both compensation and impact to be equally important. Additionally, we also see that the non-binary, they rated uh, recognition and influence on organizational strategy 
uh, as equally important. And so then that was higher than uh, compensation. So these were the slight differences between the advancement. And next, uh, we wanted to look at the importance of factors that people think help them uh, in successfully landing their RCD positions. And here, you know, we already covered what the top three were in the previous slides, uh, but uh, when we look at the different genders and their responses, we saw that women consider that their interpersonal communication skills, their leadership skills, and referrals from others help them to land their jobs. Whereas men stated that it was the technical skills, uh, the types of projects that they worked on, as well as the number of overall uh, number of years of overall, uh, overall experience uh, that they had, uh, both in and out of RCD. And the non-binary respondents, they ranked uh, experience in the academic research and interpersonal communication as important factors for them successfully landing uh, their RCD positions. So we wanted to see if, uh, if there is any difference in how hiring managers pay importance uh, to these factors when they are looking to hire candidates into, into the RCD positions. And um, uh, when we saw uh, uh, what the top factors were, the top most was technical skills for all hiring managers, regardless of gender. And this was followed by interpersonal skills and the experience in uh, an academic research environment. Additionally, we saw some uh, interesting differences where for women, in addition to interpersonal skills and academic research experience, uh, the female hiring managers, they actually look at uh, technical certifications and consider that to be an important factor uh, when they are looking at hiring candidates into RCD positions. Whereas the male hiring managers, they pay importance to the referrals from others, as well as any experience that the candidate had uh, working uh, with an uh, uh, RCD group as a student. So uh, looking at the factors that motivate uh, job changes and looking at it from the gender lens, uh, for everyone, uh, the factors that motivate them were the opportunity for a more meaningful contribution, professional skills development, joining an innovative organization. But the interesting observation we made were uh, related to the women and non-binary. And uh, for them, we see that they are motivated to find a team that is a better cultural fit. And additionally, the non-binary also uh, consider that lack of motivation is a factor that would motivate them to change jobs, as well as they look at the diversity of opportunities at the new place, uh, you know, when considering a job move. Some other interesting things that are not here, but uh, uh, they were related to flexible uh, working hours um, and uh, better work-life balance. We saw. Uh, that men rated that slightly higher than women. So that was a little bit interesting for us as well. Uh, so over to you, Patrick. Thanks, Shafak. So just want to acknowledge uh, all of our collaborators in the working group that helped support this work, as well as um, the ongoing support from the National Science Foundation for this and the related work on the RCD Nexus Center of Excellence. And so with that, um, We'd really like to reach out to you all because I know you've got some groups working on these same kinds of topics, and we think there's some overlap in, in, in our interests and the questions we're exploring. We'd love to collaborate and coordinate. So, in addition to questions, we'd really like to hear, you know, what do you guys think is the best way for us to work together on some of these things? Thank you very much, both. So, so first, yeah. So, Patrick. Um, for, for the question of collaboration, I, I, I think, you know, we, we collaborate already well between US, RSE and CACFED, especially on this, there are more possibilities, I totally agree. Um, are there any questions? Please just raise your hand and put something in the chat. I'll stop sharing so we can see one another again. <laughs> yeah. That's helpful. Ian? Hey, Patrick, Shafak, thank you. Uh, it's great. I, I'm glad that somebody's looking into this so, so carefully. I'm curious if you've um, looked at other surveys, perhaps like 
Stack Overflow developer survey and sort of how the RCD community compares to, you know, what traditional software engineers outside of RCD are, are there are there things that we can infer about the differences uh, between the two communities? We so the, the main thing we looked at there was we looked at a number of things. Um, we haven't yet. I don't know. I'm trying to remember if we looked at the international RSC survey when we were doing this analysis. We looked at a number of them. In particular, what we were looking for is the distinction between uh, sort of research related jobs and traditional enterprise IT. And we saw that you know, many of the things that are cited for why people were motivated to resign or switch jobs during the pandemic didn't actually hold as much for the research related jobs. Um, and, and that was the biggest distinction that we saw is that where um, there were a lot of things that people, reasons that people were leaving jobs, they didn't hold as much um, for the research community. Um, there's tons more work we could do there. Um, and, you know, I think that would definitely be interesting to explore that further. Um, and we have we mentioned some of those things that we looked at in the paper. Um, so, but I think it would be really interesting to look at consistency of what other surveys in this domain are finding, like the International RSC survey. Great, thanks. Um, I, I see somebody asking if the RCD community is the same as HPC scientific computing. We think that. Um, the RCD community subsumes, well, it includes, I don't want to subsumes, it, it includes that HPC scientific community, but there's a bunch of people doing things beyond HPC, ranging from cloud computing to a lot of social science computing that doesn't happen in an HPC environment in digital humanities, a lot of data work that um, isn't necessarily closely tied to HPC. So it's there's definitely a very, very strong overlap, but we're we're struggling, to be honest, to be as inclusive as possible because they're, the domain of what people think of as supporting research with technology is really, really broad. Thank you very much. And so Joshua has a question. He raised a hand. And that, that is the last question for now that we can, you know, okay. move to the next speaker. I, I think we can, you know, have discussions also offline okay. or at the breaks about the collaboration. Yeah. Sasha. Just a quick one. So we know that how much these factors matter to people, but when we have things like, you know, how much is salary a factor, do we know how much more salary people want? Like, do we know if it's like, yeah. oh, I would value 5% more or I would value like 30% more? Because that might make a huge difference in how tractable that is to address. Yeah, that's a really interesting question. And no, we have we didn't explore it at that level of detail, but I do think um, that would be a really interesting thing to explore. How much difference on these different factors would make a difference? So that's a great, a great suggestion. Yeah, we can talk more. I think the DICE salary survey, if you've looked into that, does a pretty right. good job of breaking down things like that. That might be a close comparison. And just quickly to Dan Gunter's question, yes, we looked at career stages. You can read about that in the paper. 